Okay. Oh, oh, by the way, critters, you can just kill them because they end up body blocking. Critters? What you are see critters? Th there's a, like a chicken and a frog in your base? Right over... Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Good. Intense, intense. So you would have wanted that farm on the left side of your town hall? It's okay now, oh, because then I you have less to... walking time. Yeah, next next one goes minutes. on the farm. Mm -hmm. So all of these have a gap. Uh, it doesn't immediately start if you uh, click uh, the... Okay. Yeah. The next makes uh, another farm. Another farm. So full disclosure, you've got one gap in between all of your buildings, but that's fine. Oh, really? We can improve that later. Okay. Because I have to pretty much make them touch each other. Yeah, that's a full wall. Okay, gotcha. So now the next goes in gold, and you can start mm -hmm. taking the left two peasants and shift-clicking them to the left tree, and the right two peasants and shift-clicking them to the right tree. Mm -hmm. And now all new uh, town hall goes to the trees, and click your altar. You want to hit that hero. There we go. Asa. Perfect. Let's take a pause, uh, which you can uh, do by pressing F10P, I think. All right. So here's how rallies works, first of all. Mm -hmm. You can press return to game. Uh, return to game, okay. So think of the altar and any building as having four exit points. Top mm -hmm. left, bottom left, top right, and bottom right. Each corner. Yeah. When you set your rally flag of the altar or any building, it thinks of like you could set the rally flag somewhere in the opponent's base in the bottom left. It will mm -hmm. see which corner is nearest. Right. And then it will spawn from that place. Okay. So it see it splits it up into a horizontal and a vertical line into four quadrants and it, it will say, well, if it's in that quadrant, then it spawns out from that corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If that corner is blocked, it will rotate clockwise to find the next nearest uh, adjacent point to that corner point, and it will spawn always. from there instead. Always. Okay, always clock clock clockwise. Always clockwise. So, you see the orange camp to the bottom right of your base? Yes. There's a... yeah. So, that orange camp, if you click towards it, it will your hero will try to spawn in a tree that it cannot reach. Right. And then it will rotate. Wait, is it counterclockwise? Let me see. Well, if it's clockwise, it will come out southwest, no? Yeah, uh, it will come out southwest. It's counterclockwise, actually. Oh, okay, so it would come out on the top right, so it will yeah. be very inefficient. Yes, exactly. So gotcha. you want to put it to the bottom right of your altar and then shift it. Yeah, it is counterclockwise. I knew it by feeling once I, I realized <laughs> how on this map it always goes wrong when you don't pay attention. Mm. So you want to rally it right under your farm yeah, and, then and then shift, shift it click. towards the orange. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is also a way where if you are human and you have a full wall off, you can easily plan where your hero pops out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Either on the inside and safe and therefore unkillable or on the outside and therefore joining the adventure on the map. Right, right. Okay. We in this case as well, because you said I have one tile gap between every building. Is there yeah. also a tile gap between my altar and the, the wood, in theory? No. So there are uh, so there are hard edge buildings and there are soft edge buildings. Mm -hmm. If you build a hard... Okay, if you build a soft edge against another soft edge building, there's always a gap, even when they touch. What qualifies as soft edge buildings? Uh, so you cannot tell, you just have to know. Okay. So uh, the, <laughs> the altar, the farm, and the lumber camp and the blacksmith are all hard. Mm -hmm. But the barracks and the town hall are soft. Okay. Alt altar soft too, actually. Altar soft too, sorry. Farm, blacksmith, and lumber mill are hard. Mm-hmm. None of them produce units. Maybe that helps. Okay, okay, yeah. And yeah. all the buildings that produce units are soft. Okay. Except Griffin Aviary, which is an air building. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, 
basically, I think this is actually the rule. If they if they are producing ground units, they're soft, and if they don't produce ground units, they're hard. So then you give too much information. No, it's fun this way. We're <laughs> <laughs> I like like for me, like I think a lot of information is good for me because I will store it in the back of my mind, and when I forget it and it's brought up again, I will be like, ah, oh, yeah, right. I think and so then I too. have that. I think I, it's helpful. Yeah. So if a hard edge touches a hard or a soft edge, it's mm -hmm. a full block. Right. It's only when two soft things touch each other that you can go in between. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Don't um, get distracted. So it, if, <laughs> if the altar touches the town hall, there's yep. a gap. If a barracks touches the town hall, there's a gap. If a workshop touches the town hall, there's a gap. Because all of those create ground units. Yeah. But a farm. A farm touches the town hall, that's a full wall. That Blacksmith. Yeah, that's hard. Blacksmith, lumber mill, touch a farm, uh, touch a town hall, that's that's uh, fully walled off. And then finally, trees are always hard as well. So even when you right. do a diagonal corner touch of a soft or a hard building against a tree, that's a full wall. Gotcha. Okay. I'm probably going to mess that up a lot, but... But you'll know why at least. I'll understand why and realize, yeah. And yeah. slow and steady, I'll figure it out. Okay, cool. So um, your opening, let, let's do opening before I get too much into the micro mechanics. I want to teach you a build order that you'll be mostly using today at first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of a, a fast tech without too much tier one uh, value. Okay. All right. So your build order is going to be three footmen, two farms, mm -hmm. no third farm, and only okay. eight peasants on gold. And that's going to make you exactly 24 out of 24. And then you'll, on wood. Yeah, and then you'll tech. Yeah, okay. So no new farms after this, which uh, also means you won't get to fix your open layout and you're very harassable. But next time <laughs> we'll do barracks to wood into a farm against TC and then mm -hmm. altar to wood into a farm against TC with one gap opening. Yeah. So right. in this case... Um... Uh, let me just think. So, this is also a viable build compared to the other one where you do the call to arms mechanic and go to the. You'll still camp be doing right call to arms for creeping. Okay, okay. Um, that would still be a part of this build. Yeah, the difference is you're not going like th four or five footmen, you're not getting defend upgrade. Right. That's the only difference. Okay. Okay, five on gold, eight on wood eventually. And mm -hmm. uh, you'll know because you'll be at 20 foot and then at 22 and 24, and that's your final footy. Okay. Let's go. And will I have resources to advance during this or only once I've reached the 24 upkeep? Yeah, once you've reached. Good question. Okay. Uh, it's like five to 10 seconds after your third footman uh, has okay. been started. Okay, okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Let's go. That's six on gold there. Okay, nice find. There's your second footman. You want to cancel that because you need another peasant first. Good. Is there a hotkey to cancel here? Uh, escape. Okay. Okay, that's nice. It's very nice, and I miss it in <laughs> AoE where it means deselect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now you start grouping those four peasants on the right uh, to make them into militia. And uh, that's your final hot. peasant. You make one more footy. Oh, I made the militia too fast, I think. It's a little bit too fast, but it's all right. Start moving to the orange camp. Okay, good. Everything go. Water elemental summon. Bring everything close. Send water elemental in first. Br bring it closer. Otherwise, your elemental dies too quick. Kill the ogre and then the, green the greenest troll. Yeah, now you're going to have 12 seconds until you tech. Roughly. The greenest troll. I like the description. Yep, pick up the item. It's a claw, so it's going to make you attack faster. I mean, it's going to make you oh, attack I made... with higher damage. I think I made one too many peasant. No, no, no you're, I good. you're good. Perfect. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, let's send those peasants back uh, to work. And you're going to idle inside your base for a bit. We are. We're going to take all your army and go inside your base. Oh, my army wants to go inside the base. Yeah. Uh, we are simulating that you could get harassed now. Human always gets harassed. You always are on the defensive first. 
Okay. You've got 60 wood. Let's make a blacksmith against the trees on the left. Yeah, there, Look. exactly. Perfect. Okay. Now you have 20 wood. Let's make a farm. Underneath it. Oh, that's hard. Okay, now you're going to make an arcane tower, a scout tower, uh, actually. Okay, let me think now what that's this one. Make it this. Oh, I can't build it. Is that fine? That position? Yeah, that's a full wall now against your town hall. So that's uh, it can be a good thing. I would have made it one higher considering you already have an open base design. Okay. But keep in mind, the idea is not to have an open base design. It's yeah, by correct. Accident. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, okay, so you're getting harassed now. Go ahead and summon a water elemental. Someone is harassing you. You're fighting, you're microing, whatnot. Oh. Oh, I am. Okay, I yeah. was looking. Where am I being attacked? <laughs> okay, no, it's uh, in theory. Send the peasant back to work. Uh, make this into an arcane tower. Uh, which peasant? Uh, there's one right over your scout tower. Oh, right. Ah, oh, he was hiding well. Yep. You're going to want to uh, make what? that scout tower into an arcane tower. And then you're going to make one more farm. Note how you're 24 under 30. A hero costs 5. So mm -hmm. this extra farm is needed to now start a rifleman and still be able to make a mounty king uh, at some point. Okay. okay. So you can make another uh, farm now as well. Just start. go ahead and start another one to make sure we're all ready for the extra rifle as well. Perfect. So okay. would it make sense to just have this guy make another one, like the guy who's building one initially, or is it better to build two? In this case, you kind of need two because a farm is six food. For other races, it's like 10, but for human, it's only six. Um, mm -hmm. They're quite cheap. And a hero costs five, so you wouldn't be able to keep producing rifles. And you want to start another rifleman now. Okay. So now Let's you immediately start the Mountain King. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to, you can make one more peasant now. The reason we didn't make the peasant before is because we wanted to stay on just two farms. But mm -hmm. I'm assuming you would have had to do some defense with your peasants. You might have even less lumber than you have now. Uh, and it can be nice to like make it now. The point of this build is to get uh, Mountain King out as quickly as possible. We're investing less in early game creeping, and mm -hmm. we just want to get that MK out to start power leveling him, and he's got some nice skills that can kill units. Now you're going to make okay. one Arcane Sanctum, and ideally you make it as quick as you have 150 wood, but you know there's been more to talk about. Does it matter where I build it? Um, no. I mean, not in front. Okay, that so will build in, <laughs> yes. in the back. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you don't want to get those peasants harassed. And you're going to power build that with either two, like total two, or three, or four. It kind of depends on your prediction if you will have enough resources to immediately utilize it. So now you're supply blocked, so you would actually not want to power build it with three, as you won't be able to use it anyway. You want to make a farm. Yeah. But the idea is the moment you have enough wood you want to make up for lost time because you didn't mm -hmm. have enough wood immediately your goal was to get your mountain king as quickly as possible right and then once you hit that wood you want to make up for lost time and get your first caster out as quickly as possible okay is there any point here where i would want to build a lumber camp so uh, lumber mill yes uh lumber mill or lumber camp um uh, in this game, especially on this map, you can see how like your right side peasants are kind of far away. Yeah. And you could have put them on the top trees instead, which was a little bit of a better route. Some maps mm -hmm. have wood closer nearby, and the lumber camp is only 120 wood. So yes, I I think you could have done that for sure. Uh, this build, it's a little bit of an advanced build. It tries to cut out as many unnecessary costs as possible. For example, you could have gone for a lumber mill and you could have mm -hmm. gone for an arcane vault. Arcane vault gives you the ability to bounce back from damage taken with an early regeneration scroll and lumber mill gives you more wood. But with this one, we are counting every penny so much that mm -hmm. we're trying to get as many rifles out as possible, get the quickest possible mounting king and the lumber mill would have easily delayed your mounting king for like 10 seconds. And in that case, you know, you're not starting to creep your MK as quickly. And by now, you don't need lumber anymore, ever. Yeah, okay. So in theory, this build is about, it's a bit greedy. Yeah. It's high tech and like just greedy opening and try to take advantage of the of that. Yeah, the, the greed here is by not making many footies, you can't creep as much. You cannot mm -hmm. do an aggressive footman run by attack where you try to harass workers. 
uh, you don't defend as easily as well and, and you get more rifles for that in return which is a higher quality mid-game army rifles have damage they're sturdy they're just like good all-around shooters um, they can beat the the thing that they are supposed to counter and they can beat their counter too to a degree so like okay. they don't really have a super hard counter until much later in the game and because you're you're making your mountain king a win condition here so rifles are also a win condition they can mm -hmm. do good damage they can win battles they can creep fast but really you're putting a lot of extra investment into getting your mk as quickly as possible and then having a high dps unit the rifleman mm -hmm. to creep as quickly as possible to get, make that mountain king dangerous and then you can try to hit certain timings so there are many different timings in Warcraft 3. Mountain King 1, the quicker he comes out, the quicker you have access to Stormbolt and therefore the ability to stun and damage someone from range and focus them down and kill them. Once you get level 3, you can upgrade one of your abilities, either Stormbolt mm -hmm. or Thunderclap. Mm -hmm. And then you can get to level 4 eventually. Now you've got two level 2 abilities, which is cool, but they both cost mana. And so the level three is a huge power spike. Four is not as big of a power spike usually. First okay. of all, it takes longer to get there. And secondly, you still only have level two abilities. So the uneven levels are really big. One, three, and five. And then you try to use a high level ability. If you can use that to immediately win a battle, either out in the open or in their base, mm -hmm. that's called you know using that level three timing. Okay, a couple of follow-up questions. Yep. Is my aim with this build to creep hard or attack my opponent, or is it more about adapting to what's happening? So initially you sacrifice Archmage levels. You're standing in your base for a bit in expectation of getting harassed. If you don't get mm -hmm. harassed, you go to the next green camp and then the next. Okay. Right? But your base, notice how you made the Arcane Tower after taking up to tier two? Mm -hmm. It's another way where we cut initial defense and therefore we are right. forced to stay at home there are builds right. that make the arcane tower and for it to finish by the time an opponent even gets to your base so that's a lot safer that allows you to leave and not even come back for initial hero harassment so the aim for this build is to uh tech fast get that mk out and then your your goal it can be different so you don't have a lot of lumber surplus initially so you cannot typically expand with it and your Archmage isn't high enough level to uh, do like big... Um, a player's forces are your Archmage attacked. isn't high enough level to make it a win condition. In fact, mm -hmm. when you start creeping, you may even pull your Archmage away to only level your Mountain King. Once he's level 3, either that can mean when an opponent attacks you during creeping, you can, you know, you can just kill him there. Or once you get level three, you immediately attack. But that's kind of based on the game state. So you don't exactly know where it's going to go yet. Yeah. Once you get three, you can also just try to get five next or four. Or you okay. can attack them in their base. But it depends on a lot of different things. Follow-up question. Uh, if I have both my heroes attacking or creeping together, they share XP then. Yeah, 50-50. So there's a fixed XP pool they get, and they should take share of that. So if you pull one away, the other one gets more. Correct. Um, okay. When two heroes are nearby creeps and you kill them, they both get 50% of the original value of the creep, but mm -hmm. higher level heroes get less XP from creeps than lower level heroes. So if there is a total of 100 to split between two level one heroes, yeah. they get 50 and 50 XP. Right. But if they are level four and three, and there was a hundred to give, maybe they get like forty-two and thirty-eight. Okay, but in theory, in in this case, I want to level up my Mountain King because he has a bigger power spike, so I might want to pull my uh, Archmage away. Yeah, th there there can be different designs. So like right now, you're level one point eight, so you're gonna creep the first green camp with both of them, get your mm -hmm. Archmage too, and mm -hmm. then you make a decision whether. You are now going to try to aim for 2-2, two, 2-3, two, two, or 3-2. Okay. And so I would, that's a I would still, I would still use my Archmage to spawn the water elemental and then just run away. Yeah, or even if there's a big creep, you would keep hitting that creep and only remove it right before it's going to die. Okay, how big is the distance until they don't get affected? Power build a workshop now and make a mortar team. It's roughly as far as a mortar team shoots. I don't have space in my base. 
Well, th there is space where that peasant is, but uh, it's at the back, yeah. Okay, I found it. Okay, okay. It still will take some time for me to understand exactly the spacing and everything. It's a bit There's... awkward for me to place because there is no like grid uh, showing in the ground as I place things. Yeah, that's true. It's feeling based. Yeah, so that feel like that might take some time. And okay. Mortar team. So oh, mortar keep... team. Yeah, the <laughs> you're getting punished for going over, right? Uh, mortar team is like. A... Yeah, kind of like a trebuchet and a mangonel in one. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're killing rifles. I don't want the upkeep, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's being an upkeep so much. You got 3.3k gold. Still, I'm greedy. Okay. Oh, oh, by the way, critters, you can just kill them because they end up body blocking. Critters? What you are see critters? Th there's like a chicken and a frog in your base. Right over, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> got him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, take the mortar team and uh, use the attack ground command to the right side of your town hall, out of what you Let's think see. is its range, and then you get to see its range. Uh, wait. So attack range, uh, where exactly? Attack Did ground to the right side of your town hall. Okay. Yeah, like and that. that's the range, roughly the range where the heroes will be affected by the. Yeah, on the to, to be on the safe side, stand outside of that range, and then you should be okay. good. Okay. 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 So roughly half a screen for me. Uh, yeah, for horizontally, yeah. right? But vertically, it's yeah, yeah. it's more than half. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then when it comes to uh, what if both heroes are both not nearby a creep and it dies, they also share fifty-fifty. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait! Repeat. If you're creeping with units only and both your heroes are at home and not even remotely near and definitely outside of that mortar attack range uh, distance, so your heroes are at home, mm -hmm. your units are in the top left creeping, XP is globally attributed to all available heroes ah, anyway. Interesting. So, yeah, so in theory, it only changes if I have one hero nearby. Yeah, it, it changes okay. who gets it. You can only yeah. change this by having one nearby and then the other not. Otherwise, yeah. both get it when they're near, both get it when they're far. Okay. Now, here's another special XP mechanic. If you are tier 2 or tier 3 and you only have a singular hero, you get bonus XP from all sources, both enemy units and creeps. So there's a strategic option to stay one hero. Yep. It's 15% bonus while you're in tier 2, and it's 30% bonus while you're in tier 3. Okay. Interesting. The moment you start training another hero from the altar, that bonus is lost. Even if okay. that uh, hero ends up dying, it's still lost. It's about ever having started a second hero. That's where you lose the bonus. Okay. If you cancel the hero because you change your mind, you get it back again. But only if it had never been made yet and it is not currently in production. Okay. So if I produce a hero and it's 99% and I cancel it, those 99%, I was missing the XP bonus. Correct. So sometimes okay. like I'll I'll rush to tier two, I start another hero, but I'm about to kill this fat level five creep. I'm like, yeah. All right, I'll just cancel it. My second hero is five seconds later, but I get that fifteen percent bonus XP on my main. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, one question: yep. Is there any blacksmith upgrades or upgrades in buildings that affect my heroes? In nope. terms of like, okay, so heroes are purely based on their level and their skills. Correct. And go ahead and hover over the uh, the golden head with the blue brains in the unit ui of a hero the golden head with the blue brains yeah you you hero click your hero and then uh, you'll see an icon in the middle bottom mm -hmm. yeah strength see, agility intelligence so strength is health and hit point regen agility is armor which is damage reduction from physical sources and mm -hmm. attack speed and then there's mm -hmm. uh, intelligence which is uh, mana and mana regen and then every hero has okay. a primary Those attribute where it also increases their attack damage when carrying that stat attribute. Okay. Yeah, the Mountain King is all about damage, I see. Well, he's oh, all no, about actually, strength. He's tanky. Yeah, he's tanky. Strength. Yeah. Tanky, regen, and then low attack speed, low armor, and low mana. Right. Okay, cool. Let's... Um... Uh, just one follow-up question here. Yep. Uh, do I always want, like, whenever I'm creeping or fighting or everything, do I always want to use, for example, my water elemental spell at all times? Not necessarily. So water elemental costs 125. 
and it's weaker at level 1. Let's say if you're level 2.8 mm -hmm. and you have 160 mana mm -hmm. and you start a creep camp, if you creep it without, you're going to level up. You're going to get unlocking the level 2 water elemental spell. Right, so I want to save for that instead. Yeah, yeah you want to level up first and then make a better one. And I d because water elementals only last for a short time, you're actually going to find that if you summon it somewhere irrelevant, mm -hmm. that you're not going to be able to bring it into a next relevant location. They're also pretty slow. So if you make it only a small green camp and then you go to a red camp, it won't reach there on time to tank the damage. So you got to be a bit gotcha. strategic about where you summon them. You don't yeah. want to over summon. And the other thing is when you level up, you gain more health and mana, which also means um, you have a percentual maintenance of your health and mana when you level up. <coughs> your total okay. stats go up, so your current mana directly adds bonus mana points the less you spend. Okay, okay. So I want to have as big of a bank as possible when I level up. Correct. Um, I noticed here I was trying to use a skill, but this unit was immune to magic. Yeah. Is that only uh, neutral spawns, or will there also be units in the game that are immune to magic, like from the enemy? Something you just have to know, it's all the golems. I like that. You just <laughs> have to know. <laughs> yeah. It'll come over time. Yeah. Golems yeah, are immune to magic. Yeah. So I think my biggest issue, no matter what, will be distinguishing units and knowing exactly what units of each race is. Yeah, but that, of course, that's, that's a that knowledge thing. But graphically, yeah. I think the game does a pretty good job of showing like very disparate silhouettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can easily tell that these all five different units are different, obviously. Right. But in the heat of the battle, when I have enemy units as well of a different race, where they look different, my units, their heroes look different. It can get a bit overwhelming. But again, I think that's just a thing that comes over time. That makes sense. Let's yeah. take these three riflemen and go to the top green camp. I want to show you something about creep targeting logic. Would the creep ever attack my work or peasants that are up there? After yes, getting if, close? if they gather too close, yes, they will in daytime. In nighttime, everyone is asleep from the creeps, mm -hmm. except guess. Night units. Golems. <laughs> Golem. Oh, the magic guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you start attacking the creeps, they will attack the thing within everything that's in their range. They'll attack the thing that attacked them first, which makes okay. sense. Even when something else comes closer later, they will keep attacking the thing that is in range. So if you want to remove a rifle, like just like a boar in AW4, right? An AW2. No, in AW2, right? In AW4, the boar will attack what's closest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like AW2. Yeah, yeah. They follow the initial aggressor so long as it's still in range. The moment it goes mm -hmm. out of range, they will usually not chase. Ah! Ignore this. I know yeah. it's hard. We're going to quit this game soon. Just look at okay. the rifles and ignore the sounds. Mm -hmm. Attack the turtles. The, yeah. Okay. Now you pull them away. They retarget, right? Yeah. Now put all of the rifles next to the big turtle. Okay. Take the rifle that is being attacked. Stop over my crane. Take the rifle uh -huh. that's being attacked and mm -hmm. issue an attack amount on your workshop. Did you see oh. what happened? He, they changed the target. So he doesn't want to attack things that are attacking a player. Um, he doesn't want to attack units that are targeting another player, even if that player is yourself. But it doesn't have to be a building, right? Because I, I was targeting my own units here as well. Right, it can be a unit or a building. Okay. So creeps choose not to attack those units that are engaged in an attack command on a human player. Okay. So, so I... he chooses from all the other valid targets who are not mm -hmm. currently attacking a human player, either their units or buildings. So there will be the all the valid targets that are attacking it and the creep. Exactly. Or are just okay. on simple move commands. Doesn't have to be attacking anyone right. so long as they're not attacking a player. Okay, okay. You can also... So now that is called the deny micro. I just made that term up. <laughs> you are now denying them to attack that rifle because the rifle was given a command to attack a player. Right, right. You can also do a deliberate retargeting where you take all available units and attack your own water elemental for just one second. 
Uh -huh. The attack doesn't then... even have to trigger. Like, some yeah. have a big wind-up of the attack. Uh -huh. It doesn't even have to fully trigger. And then the creeps will attack that unit instead. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. That's a nice trick. Found this out much later, but now it is pretty common in doing efficient creeping where you don't take uh, too much damage. So, yeah. if you remember on your first camp, the ogre warrior, the level 3 ogre, was hitting your footman. Now, mm -hmm. footman is something you want to bring into the map, so you don't want it to take any damage. It's, yeah. it's better to have it retarget on your water elemental or on your archmage, and then make sure that the footy remains fully healthy. Okay. So in theory, when I, I send my water elemental first, always, anyway, yeah. ideally. Yeah. Um, and as long as they all start attacking the water elemental, I will not have to retarget or do any micro there, right? Correct. That's, that's true. But there are a lot of exceptions. So if the water elemental gets ensnared, by accident, or right, if some melee switch. units cannot reach it, then yeah. Right. Uh, I lost to easy AI. <laughs> you had a bit of a gold bank. You should try to use it, man. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Yeah.